Hey friends, this is Quest and Current, and today I'm going to explain and show to you why for some of your devices this cable may be a good cable and this one may be a bad cable, even though technically both of them should be identical in charging your devices or transmitting power. And for some applications the USB-C to USB-C cable may even be better due to higher voltages being available, higher currents and uh, faster data transmission speeds. But still, oftentimes it's safer to use the USB-A to USB-C cable. And this is somewhat of a follow-up video to an earlier one I brought out about why it's important to use the CC1 and CC2 lines of USB-C connectors, especially in your downstream facing devices, which are the ones that are getting charged from your laptop or power supply, like your phone or in the example I have here, this little light. And this little light is pretty much a perfect use case to show why these CC1 and CC2 pins are needed. But before I go into that, I have linked the older video in the video descriptions if you want to take a look and, and view that first. So I will give you one second to click on that and then you will hop back in. Okay, perfect. So this device uh, is a little LED flashlight with this belt clip or whatever clip you, you use it for. And I got it a while ago, but I'm not using it that often. Even though it is rechargeable via USB-C, which is nice, it has a bit of a problem which I would call the epilepsy mode and I'm going to show you. So it has three different modes. The first one is, is kind of okay and nice. It's just a red light, uh, a single red LED. The second one is actually a really strobing one. So if you're actually having problems with that, shield your eyes. It's white, blue and really strobing, just, just going full on. Uh, maybe I can show you, yes. Full on, blue, 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 white, 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 blue, 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 white, white, white. And I'm not sure if it's um, like this to imitate an American police um, light or some other um, police or ambulance lights around the world. So. The third mode, um, now you can unshield your eyes again, it's, it's back to straight lighting. It's just white light and we have that in two different intensities, high and low, like this, before going out again, so that's off. And besides this weird blinky light, I found out that they've actually wired the USB connector wrongly. And while you have no way of seeing that from the outside, so there there is, is no way of you actually knowing what's going on in there without disassembling it. I've brought in this power bank to show you. And this power bank features both uh, USB-A as well as USB-C out and inputs. So the USB-A are outputs only and the USB-C is an out and input. This is due to the fact that USB-C cables are interchangeable. So you can plug it in like this or like this and the devices themselves can then an agree in which direction the, the power is going to flow. So if this power bank is going to charge a device or if it is getting charged by a device. And this can be done with two different ways in general. Either you have an active electronics, a so-called e-marker IC, that can talk between your cable, your device and your charger and then agree on certain charging uh, speeds or charging directions or the, the more simple version is what I've, I've shown you earlier and what I hope that you've seen by now is those two pull down resistors on CC1 and CC2 just to indicate that this is a downstream facing port so this is a device needing power um, to work this is a device getting charged and those two resistors they are probably below a cent. Um, that's what, what this device is actually missing. And I can show you quite easily because if I just plug in the USB-A to USB-C cable, the USB-A connector always has power applied. So it always has the five volts and it has no way to detect a device being connected. This means that the power bank in this case has to provide power at all times and discharge itself 
um, over a longer period of time just to provide the five volts on this output. And if I connect the light, you can see this little red LED immediately goes on, indicating that it is charging. And now the charging current is high enough for the power bank to actually notice that. So it sprung to life and shows me, yes, I've <laughs> recently charged it, it's still at 100%. So now let's take a look. It's still the same power bank, but just a different cable. The USB-C to USB-C cable, if I connect it, doesn't do anything. There, there is no light going on. And the power bank itself will also go out after a while because it didn't detect anything being connected. And that's due to the fact, oh, now it, it just went out. That's due to the fact that this USB-C port is missing the pull down resistors or uh, if it would have been produced um, with, with a bit more uh, future proof in mind with the IC that's actually doing the power negotiation. But for simple devices like this, the pull down resistors would be perfectly fine. And like I said, they're below a cent. So they, they don't even matter. It's just a problem with designing th those, those little gadgets. And for you as a user, that's really unintuitive because you have two cables and both of them are identical. The USB-C one can even be better in, in terms of, of power or data transmission. But for some devices, they just don't work. So that's why I started with, oftentimes you are on the safe side by using USB-8 to USB-C cable because those are the stupid, one, stupid ones. Those don't have any fancy features. They, they don't have power saving applications in mind. They don't have power delivery negotiations going on. They cannot define the power direction in which the so the direction in which the power is flowing, it's always going to be in this end and out of this end. But if you don't know much, then probably that's better for you. And only if you know what you're doing, you can use USB-C to USB-C cables and just <laughs> know that this device won't work with that. And with that, that's pretty much everything I have. I will going, go to disassemble this device and take a look inside so you can actually see those two resistors missing. Uh, give me one moment, please. Okay, here we go. Um, I've brought the screwdriver because it fits perfectly and it is quite a tiny screwdriver so it can easily and quickly disassemble this unit. And while I'm doing that, I can tell you some more uh, facts and interesting quirks about the USB-C connectors um, themselves. So generally USB-C cables uh, are rated for 3 amps maximum but can be rated for up to 5 amps. The thing is that uh, even by now, and the standard is not that old, only a couple of years, some manufacturers have found out that they need more current than that. So there are some, some cables here that you can buy online that are rated at 7 amps or even 10 amps. And I'm not sure how they, they specified that or how they even make cables for that because the, ca the, the charger and, and the cable cannot talk to each other. It's only the device being connected can talk to both the cable and the charger. And if the charger is, is capable of handling more than, than five amps, the cable just has to bear with it. So if you have one where the connector is getting really hot, you, you may take a look if, if that's the case in there. And, ooh, I mean, that's quite a large battery, 400 milliamp hours, so not too shabby. Uh, let's get that out. And yeah, so someone manufactured that with, let's say, cost in mind. It's a one-sided PCB which features just, let me take a look, one IC, two IC, three, four, and the microcontroller, uh, and five. So those are marked as Q, Q1, Q3, Q2, probably Q4. So those are the transistors for switching the different LED colors, uh, blue, white, red, and the outer and the inner ring, um, one push button, uh, which even has uh, its little probably pull down resistor, uh, two power resistors for the higher power drawing LEDs. And over here we have the interesting part, the charging circuitry R and G. So there's a red and a green LED indicating charging and charged. So this means that this IC here is the charge controller. 
making sure that you don't overcharge um, this uh, lipo cell because it has no dedicated protection IC um, on board. So this thing has to do that and you most certainly set the charging current with this resistor uh, as you normally do with those uh, TP4056 clones or evolutionary steps of this IC. But what you can also clearly see, the USB-C port here has no pull-down resistors, so there's nothing going on. They've just pinned out um, the reverse and ground, so the 5 volt and ground rail um, in this case, and no CC1, CC2, or even uh, D plus and D minus for data connections. So that's something I, I wouldn't expect of this device in any way. So what you can see, this USB-C port is pretty much identical to what we see on this breakout board. Uh, we just got ground and VCC or rebus for the five volts, but no pull down resistors. When it should look like this, where you have the CC1 and CC2 connected with those two pull, two pull down resistors, like I said, costing basically nothing in manufacturing, you just have to know about them. So I hope that you now know a bit more about that. Uh, special thanks to everyone that subscribed and especially the, the YouTube Premium subscribers. They help a lot. They make sure I can buy stuff like this, disassemble it and use the time to actually read about theoretical background in USB-C. With this, I uh, thanks for, for watching and we'll see each other next week.